Hello and welcome to today's video. I will show you the process of placing bracing and steel connections of gusset plates in Revit 2024. This step is crucial for reinforcing the structural integrity of our design and ensuring it can withstand various loads effectively. Diagonal beams are essential for providing additional lateral support to the structure, minimizing sway and enhancing stability. Gusset plates are used to connect diagonal beams to columns securely, transferring loads effectively and evenly. Our first step is to place the brace beams within our Revit model. Let's get started. In the previous part video, we placed steel columns and top beams in the project. I will go to plan view, level 3. We can start by placing framing sections for the brace beams. Go to view tab above here, then elevation and drop to select framing elevation. Go to grid C and click to place an elevation at the upper and lower side of the grid then hit escape. Go to an elevation view. Double click on the framing head to open the view. I will change my scale to 1 is to 25, detail to fine and wireframe for graphics. I can select on the section box, then drag the control handle to extend the view. Select on the other control then drag it sideways to extend the view. All elements are visible. Press escape to exit the command. I can go to the structure tab. We can hide elements we don't need to see. I will select on this section view, right click, hide in view by elements. I will go to plan view, then double click on the other framing head to open. Select on this section box to extend the view. Drag using this control to extend then do the same to the other side. I will change my scale to 1 is to 25, detail to fine, and wireframe for graphics. I will select on this section view, right click, hide in view, by elements. With the two framing elevation views adjusted, I will switch to elevation 1 view. In the structure tab, select on brace. Select on 60 by 60 by 5 RSA beam type. In the properties box, we should check parameter values before placing the bracings. I will set the structural usage to vertical bracing. Set the start and end cut back to zero. I will scroll in the properties box, confirming values of the parameters before placing the bracings. I can zoom to the model space to start placing the diagonal beams. I will place my cursor along this grid line then type 36 to offset from the level and hit enter. Go to this other column and place the endpoint at the intersection here. Click to place. Go to elevation 2 view. In this view, place a bracing from this column. Align the mouse to the grid line, then type 36 and hit enter. Go to this other column and then click to place the bracing beam. I will go to plan view level 3. Go to view tab, then select section to create a section view. I will define my section extent. Click somewhere here, up to here. Then drag this back up to somewhere here. Click somewhere in your model space to exit. Double click on the section head to open. I will change the scale to 1 is to 25, detail to fine, and wireframe for graphics display. I will zoom to the beams in section to explain further. This is one of the beams. We first need to know its offset from the grid line. I will type DL for detail line then start from this endpoint to the grid line. It is set at an offset of 16.2 from the grid line as you can see. From the drawing images, the gusset plates are 5 mm thick. I will add some sketch lines to explain in detail. 16.2 is the offset value from the grid line. 
This grid line is at the center of the steel column. I will type DL to sketch the gusset location. I will start at this point, then go left at a distance of 2.5, then hit enter. I will go down up to somewhere here, then click to continue. I will go right at a distance of 5, then click and continue to finish the sketch. This will be the gusset plate's location in the design. I can place the cursor on a grid line, then hit tab key to select the chain. This reference line of the beam should be aligned to this reference line of the gusset plate. To determine the total offset distance, I will type DL, then start from this endpoint up to where it aligns to the reference line of the gusset sketch. I can select on the detail line. The total offset distance is 18.7. I will select on a detail line, right click, select all instances visible in view, then hit delete. I will select this beam, then go to properties and change my Y offset value to negative 18.7, then hit apply. Set the usage to vertical bracing. The beam has now been moved to the correct placement. I will select on this other beam, go to properties, then change my Y offset value to negative 18.7, then hit apply. The two beams are now at the correct position. When we place the connections, a plate will be between them. We can go to 3D view to see the beams in the model. The beams have been placed properly, lying back to back as you can see. Subscribe to the channel for more tutorials in Revit and other CAD softwares. Hit the like button if you find this video helpful and share it with your peers embarking on construction projects. I will go to Elevation View 1 to continue placing beams. Go to Structure tab, then select Brace Command. In the Properties box, we can set Y offset value to negative 18.7, then hit Apply. Scroll and set the structural usage to kicker bracing, then hit Apply. Start from this endpoint up to the other endpoint here at the intersection of the level and grid. I will go to Elevation View 2, then select the Brace command. Maintain the usage as kicker. Y offset value as minus 18.7. We can place the other kicker at level 5. Start from this endpoint here to this other point. I will go to elevation 1 view after placing this kicker bracing. In the properties box, set structural usage to vertical bracing then hit apply. We can place a beam from this point then go diagonally to this other point here. We can place another beam from this point, then go to this intersection point here and click to place. We can go to elevation view 2 to place the back beams. Here are the two beams we have just placed. Select the brace command, then start placing the beam from this point here, going this way to here. Place another beam from this point here, going this way, up to the intersection point here, then hit escape to exit. We can view the steel elements in 3D. As you can see, the beams have been placed back to back, and with a 5mm offset from the grid line, the gusset plates will be placed at the midpoint of the column as earlier defined. A washer plate will be placed between the beams at the cross intersection here when adding a direct bolt. With the beams defined, we can learn how to add connections to the elements. Structural steel connections can be added in 3D view. I will zoom to the base of the steel column to start adding my connections. Watch the previous video on steel design to see how we added the steel connections for the base plates. In the structure or steel tab, select connections command. 
select on this icon here. Go to properties, then select here to drop the list. Scroll and select Gusset Plate to Column and Base Plate. I will select the connection from the properties box. Move the cursor to the connection then rest for some seconds. Our selection order will be Column, Base Plate, then Diagonal Beam. Go to the model then select on this column. Hold Ctrl, then add the Base Plate and this beam, then hit Enter. There is a warning at the connection as you can see. To fix it, select and drag it above this other label. This sets the element to the correct selection order and adds a gusset plate automatically. Select on the gusset plate, then go to Edit Type. In Edit Connection Type, we have a 3D preview area here. I will set my view to show all elements at a good angle. In the Gusset Plate Shape tab, I will leave all parameters as defaults. I will go to the Plate Parameter tab then change the thickness to 5. I will edit Projection 1 and 2 values to 10. Set the other parameters to the values you are seeing on screen. In Plate Contours tab, set as none. In Bolts, set Cut Back to 0. For edge distance 1, set to 30. Two bolts are OK here. Set intermediate distance to 50 and edge distance 2 to 30. In the preview area, we can see changes dynamically for any modification of the connection. I will go to bolts parameter, then change the type from here and select EN. 14399-3 Set the bolt grade to 8.8 .8. Now, this connection has been modified to the parameters of the design images given in the description box. I will leave wells and members connection tabs as default. You can explore the other parameters in the list. For this lesson, I will press OK to continue. Click on Apply, then OK. Here is the gusset plate to column and base plate connection. We can place the same connection to the other column side. Select connection command. Select this column, then hold control to add the base plate and diagonal beam then press enter. Change the order of connected elements by dragging 3 over 2. This adds a gusset plate to the column and beam with the same parameters of the other plate. We can place a direct bolt connection for the diagonal beams. Go to connections, then search for direct bolt and select it. Select this beam, hold control key, select this other beam then press enter. A direct bolt is added but modifications are needed. Go to Edit Type, then Edit Modify Parameters. Change the type to EN14399-3. Set the grade to 8.8, .8, then go to Bolts Group 1. Set Member 1 and 2 gauge lines to 30. This will move the bolt to the dead center of the diagonal beams at the point of placement. The bolt is now moved to the center as you can see. In Spacer Plate tab, set here to Automatic then press OK. Press Apply, then OK. The direct bolt connection is now updated in the model as you can see. We can add more connections to the steel elements. I will add a connection at this point here. Select the Connection command, go to Properties and search for Gusset. Select on Gusset Plate for 3 Diagonals. Select on Gusset Plate for 3 Diagonals. The selection order is Beam, Diagonal Beam, Diagonal Beam, then Diagonal Beam. 
I will go and select the sections. Pick this column, hold control, add this beam, this beam, then this beam, then hit enter. The plate is now placed with the reference to the selected elements. The shape is not as per the design. We can edit parameters to detail from the properties box. Select on the connection, then go to edit type, then edit parameters. Set the plate thickness to 5. Set these three distances to 0. I can rotate in the preview for a better view angle of the connection elements. The plate now has been detailed to shape as you can see. To add the length or width parameters of the plate, go to projection tab and edit the values here. I will leave welds as they are then go to bolts. Set the bolt type to EN14399-3. Change the grade to 8.8. .8. Go to bolt distance 1. Set the bolt distance to 30. Set intermediate distance to 50. Set the bolt distance to 30, then 30 for intermediate distance. Go to bolt distance 2. Set the same values defined for bolt distance 1. Do the same for bolt distance 3. Type here 30, 50, 30, 30. And 30 here. You can explore the other tabs for practice. I will press OK, hit apply, then OK. In the 3D view, I can select on the plate then rotate. As you can see, it is easy to place structural steel connections in Revit. Bolts and the shape of the plate can be modified in edit type. Go to connection command. Select on this column. Hold control. Select this beam. Then this. Then this. And hit enter. A plate has been added with bolts for the selected elements. Now the properties are the same as the other connection. Select structural connection. Gusset plate at three diagonals. Pick this column, hold control, add this beam, this and this beam, then hit enter. The connection has an error which comes from the numbering of the selected elements. I will select on the connection, then drag three on top of two. Release to update. We can add the same connection to the other side. Go to connection command. With the same type here. Select on this column. Hold control. Pick this beam. This beam. Then this beam and hit enter. Check on the order of numbering. I will select 2. Then drag it above 4. Then release. Select 3. Drag it above 4. Then release. Revit remembers the setting parameter value of a connection in a project. I will rotate then zoom to the top column to add another connection. Select connection command. Change the type to gusset plate at one diagonal in the properties box. For this connection, the selection order is beam, then diagonal beam. Go to the model, select this column. Hold control, add this beam, then hit enter. A plate with bolts has been placed as you can see. Select the connection, then go to edit type, then edit modify parameters. I will set my preview to a better angle to view all elements of the connection. I will set the thickness to 5. Change the distance to 0. Set offset to 0.
camphor at one and plate arrangement to one side then go to bolt stub. Change the type to EN14399-3. Set the bolt grade to 8.8. .8. For bolt distances, set to 30 here, then 50, then 30, and 30 for intermediate distance here. For projection, set projection 1 to 10. Projection 2 to 10. Projection 3 to 80. Leave projection 4 as 0. Press OK. Apply. Then OK. The top connection is now placed in the model. To change the shape, Try adjusting the brace endpoint. I will rotate to the opposite side to add the steel connection. Select the connection command. The type has not changed in type. Select this column, hold control, add this beam and hit enter. I will refresh my 3D view tab by closing this one. Then open a new 3D view from this icon here. We can finish today's tutorial by adding direct bolts for the top diagonal beams. Go to connections and search for direct bolt then select it. Search for direct bolt then select it. Select this beam, hold control, select this other beam then hit enter. A direct bolt has been placed as you can see on screen. We can add a direct bolt for the upper bracing. Select the connection command. Pick this beam, hold control, add this beam, then hit enter. With this, you can design the other sides of the tank's end or use the mirror or copy tools. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Like this video and leave your suggestions or questions in the comments below. That's it for this video. See you in the next.